Paul Oakenfold, Sasha, John Digweed, Danny Tanaglia, Nick Warren, James Lavelle, Tony DeWitt. New York, Ibiza, Hong Kong, Sydney, Athens, Reykjavik, Barcelona, Tel Aviv. To a generation of ravers from 1996 through the turn of the century, the specific pairings of these DJs and cities produced mixes released by Global Underground that would define an era of dance music and retain both its relevance and brilliance nearly 25 years after its first release. To younger ravers, the letters GU may mean nothing. What is Global Underground? And why does it mean so much to an entire generation of fans across the world? Global Underground was founded by Newcastle friends Andy Horsfield and James Todd in 1996. Before Global Underground, Horsfield was a photographer and Todd was in the fashion industry. The pair had been in and out of the club scene leading up to 96, working in club merchandising, designing t-shirts, and selling cassette tapes, working with people such as Dave Beer from the Back to Basics party. This was a time before the commercial DJ mix CD, when clubbers used to seek out these raw live mixes of their underground heroes on dodgy cassettes with DIY inlay cards. Beer would introduce Horsfield to Paul Oakenfold, who introduced them to the guys at Renaissance, and soon the pair would be introduced to Sasha. At this time, Oakenfold began playing sets in South Africa, and Sasha was playing in Australia. Their increasing international fame made it clear to Horsfield that the DJ, not the club or brand, was the true star of the scene. Horsfield and Todd created their own company, Boxed, to capture the emerging energy following the first globetrotting DJ superstars around the world. Without a club to build a foundation on like bigger club brands such as Cream, Ministry of Sound and Renaissance, the boys were forced to think outside the box. Growing up, Horsfield would watch a BBC2 television program called Rough Guides. The host would arrive in a city bring a film crew, unpack, whip around the city searching for fun, and try to capture the energy, essence, and culture of a city on video. Musically, Horsfield enjoyed album series such as Live in Paris, which captured a specific night of live music. Drawing inspiration from these programs, the Boxed Boys created Global Underground, a mix album that would capture a night of clubbing in an exotic location with a superstar DJ at the helm before a loyal local fan base. The release included album notes from Mixmag editor Dom Phillips and photography shot by a couple of different photographers, but primarily Dean Belcher. Phillips' notes and Belcher's photography came together on the CD inlay, called the Travel Log. The Travel Log captured the fast-paced journey and hurricane of energy surrounding the DJ through photos of locals in town and on the dance floor, while providing notes to partiers around the world about the clubbing culture in the host city. The album cover gave Global Underground its iconic branding and aesthetic. In their physical form, the two-disc sets were breathtaking. Global Underground's signature look was the DJ's name and release number, with a close-up shot of the DJ looking like the coolest person on earth, standing before the host city. Horsfield met Tony DeWitt, who was playing a club at his friends in Newcastle, and told DeWitt about the concept for Global Underground. With a gig coming up in Tel Aviv, DeWitt agreed to mixing the first Global Underground release. Horsfield was then introduced to Nick Warren, and Prague became the destination for the second release. When Paul Oakenfold, reasonably selective of who he works with, came on for GU004 in Oslo, the series established itself amongst their bigger competitors. Global Underground offered its partnering DJs unparalleled exposure and creative control, which Horsfield credits to attracting top talent and receiving their best efforts. And Horsfield was right. The mixers showcased not only the DJ's technical production skills, but highlighted their superior song selection and ability to build and layer a mix. The additional media provides some of the most intimate and authentic accounts of club life around the world at that time. 
The releases gelled with the fans because it was an accurate representation of the emerging DJ culture embraced by all different cities across the world. And it gelled with the DJs because the releases were great marketing material and the mixes and photography were a true reflection of the DJ's musical taste and style. When planning a global underground release, the DJ would choose the featured city. The first four releases, De Witt in Tel Aviv, Warren in Prague, Paul Oakenfold in Oslo, and De Witt back again in Tokyo, were recorded live at the actual global underground event in the host city. Following these releases, the DJs would play a set in a club in the host city, and then return to the studio to re-record the set inspired by the songs and energy of the night. According to Horsfield, the original idea for GU was to include the best DJ in each specific genre. Carl Cox would be the techno act, Paul Oakenfold the trance act, Darren Emerson would be the house act, so on and so forth. However, what came to actually be for Global was an intimate roster of signature DJs who brought their own unique sound to each release. Horsfield says that Global Underground worked with not the biggest DJs, but the best DJs. Artists like Sasha, Deep Dish, Nick Warren with Way Out West, James Lavelle with Uncle used Global as a platform to showcase their true mixing, production and remixing talents. A shared characteristic especially amongst the early GU roster was a dedication and attention to detail to the production and remixing process in the studio. Better than anyone, Horsfield identified the DJs who knew what it took to truly create a timeless mix. Ask a Global Underground fan who their favourite DJ in the series is, and the array of answers stands as a testament to the depth of talent the brand attracted. Over 42 City Series releases, 21 DJs and duos have been featured, with the five DJs with the most City Series releases are Nick Warren with eight, James LaBelle and Dave Seaman with four, and John Digweed and Darren Emerson with three. Sharam and Dubfire each had their own solo release and shared two releases as the duo Deep Dish. Paul Oakenfold's New York release and Sasha's legendary Ibiza effort stand as the two most acclaimed mixes from the series, while Nick Warren is the series' best-selling artist. But many fans of GU have a burning passion for defending their favourite mix as best. In 1992, Dom Phillips coined the term Progressive House in his transmission for Mixmag. Across GU, progressive house is the most prevalent genre, but Horsfield is hesitant to label Global Underground as a progressive house brand. Efforts across the series span from Tony DeVitt's Hard House GU001 to Paul Oakenfold's CD1 in Oslo, featuring drum and bass, to Nick Warren's downtempo hypnotic GU24 release in Reykjavik. Horsfield gives the DJs all the credit in the creativity of these approaches and executions. On November 6th, GU43 released featuring the Netherlands native Joris Vaughan in Rotterdam. Beyond the City series, GU spawned spin-off series that would find their own success and new audiences featuring the next era of up-and-coming superstars. New Breed showcased what GU labelled the next generation of superstar DJs with fresh, energetic entries from Anthony Papas, Satoshi Tomi, Danny Howells, Alan Fitzpatrick, Sultan and others. After Hours was unveiled following GU25, featuring Deep Dish in Toronto, unveiled as two bonus CDs featuring solo efforts from Deep Dish members Sharam and Dubfire. Global Underground was more progressive in its nature than its sound and genre. Global Underground introduced innovative ideas to the dance music industry and was the first mix CD to truly acknowledge and embrace the Global Underground dance community. Global Underground was the first mix CD to bring you into a city for one night. Looking forward to today, brands at the forefront of recorded sets like Boiler Room and Circle are reintroducing the same idea, a pumping DJ in an exotic city in front of a beautiful backdrop, bringing the philosophy, the global underground album cover and travel logs another step further. Today, it's easier than ever to access your favorite DJ wherever they may play around the world. But it was Global Underground who presented DJs as superstars with devoted fan bases around the world for the first time.